First Kings 1 through 5. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this day. Um, got behind in the reading. And I just want to thank you for bringing my daughter to uh, give me the refreshing uh, spirit she brought and wanting to be included. I thank you so much. I thank you. I pray she's blessed, Lord. And um, thank you for the time that we get to spend with you. Um, it's like having a VIP seat or a um, front row concert seat ticket. You know, it's just such a great joy to have time in your word. And I pray that we learn from your word. I pray that we understand the stories and how to apply them to our lives. I pray for your spiritual wisdom and knowledge for those who are joining uh, in this walk and making sure that they read through the Bible, Lord. Let them read through your word in their lifetime at least once. Let them read it from beginning to end because I believe that as they read that seed that you just... <laughs> You plant it and it flourishes. And what a joy to have this understanding. And I thank you because it only comes from you. And I pray for everybody's health and what is ahead. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, King David was very old. And no matter how many blankets covered him, he could not get warm. So his advisors told him, we will find a young virgin who will wait on you and be your nurse. She will lie in your arms and keep you warm. So they searched throughout the country for a beautiful girl and they found Abishag from Shunim and brought her to the king. The girl was very beautiful and she waited on the king and took care of him, but the king had no sexual relations with her. About that time, David's son, Adonijah, whose mother was Haggith, decided to make himself king in place of his aged father. So he provided himself with chariots and horses and recruited 50 men to run in foot on him. Now his father, King David, had never disciplined him at any time, even by asking, what are you doing? Adonijah was a very handsome man and had been born next after Absalom. Adonijah took Joab, son of Zerah, and Abathar, the priest, into his confidence, and they agreed to help him become king. But among those who remained loyal to David and refused to support Adonia were Zadok the priest, Benani son of Jehoiada, Nathan the prophet, Shimei, Ray, and David's personal bodyguard. Adonia went to the stone of Zoleth near the spring of Enrogel, where he sacrificed sheep, oxen, and Fat and cows. He invited all his brothers, the other sons of King David, and all the royal officials of Judah. But he did not invite Nathan the prophet, or Benani, or the king's bodyguard, or his brother Solomon. Then Nathan the prophet went to Bathsheba, Solomon's mother, and asked her, Did you realize that Haggith's son, Adonia, has made himself king and that our Lord David doesn't even know about it? If you want to save your own life and the life of your son Solomon, follow my counsel. Go at once to King David and say to him, My Lord, didn't you promise me that my son Solomon would be the next king and would sit upon your throne? Then why has Adonia become king? And while you are still talking with him, I will come and confirm everything you said. So Bathsheba went into the king's bedroom. He was very old now. And, Ab and Abishag was taking care of him. Bathsheba bowed low before him. What can I do for you? He asked her. She replied, My lord, you vowed 
to me by the Lord your God that my son Solomon would be the next king and would sit on your throne. But instead, Adonia has become the new king, and you do not even know about it. He has sacrificed many oxen, fattened calves, and sheep, and he has invited all your sons and Abathar the priest and Joab, the commander of your army. But he did not invite your servant Solomon, and now... My lord the king, all Israel is waiting for your decision as to who will be king after you. If you do not act, my son Solomon and I will be treated as criminals as soon as you are dead. While she was still speaking with the king, Nathan the prophet arrived. The king's advisor told him, Nathan, the prophet is here to see you. Nathan went in and bowed low before the king. He asked, My lord, have you decided that Adonia will be the next king and that he will sit on your throne? Today he has sacrificed many oxen, fattened calves, and sheep, and he has invited your sons and attended the celebration. He also invited Joab, the commander of the army, and Abathar, the priest. They are feasting and drinking with him, and shouting, long live the king, Adonia. But I myself, your servant, was not invited. Neither were Zadok the priest, Benani, son of Jehoiada, nor Solomon. Has my Lord really done this without letting any of his servants know who should be the next king? Call Bathsheba, David said. So she came back in and stood before the king. And the king vowed, as surely as the Lord lives, who has rescued me from every danger. Today, I decree that your son Solomon will be the next king and will sit on my throne, just as I swore to you before the Lord, the God of Israel. Then Bathsheba bowed low before him again and exclaimed, May my Lord King David live forever. Then King David ordered, Call Zadok the priest, Nathan the prophet, and Benani, son of Jehoiada. When they came into the king's presence, the king said to them, Take Solomon and my officers down to Gihon Spring. Solomon is to ride on my personal mule. There Zadok the priest and Nathan the prophet are to anoint him king over Israel. Then blow the trumpets and shout, Long live King Solomon! When you bring him back here, he will sit on my throne. He will succeed me as king, for I have appointed him to be ruler over Israel and Judah. Amen, Benani, son of Jehoiada replied. May the Lord, the God of my Lord, the King, decree it to be so. And may the Lord be with Solomon as he has been with you. And may he make Solomon's reign even greater than yours. So Zadok, the priest, Nathan, the prophet, Benani, son of Jehoiada, and the king's bodyguard took Solomon down to Gion Spring, and Solomon rode on King David's personal mule. There, Zadok the priest took a flask of olive oil and the sacred tent and poured it on Solomon's head. Then the trumpets were blown and all the people shouted, Long live King Solomon! And all the people returned with Solomon to Jerusalem, playing flutes and shouting for joy. The celebration was so joyous and noisy that the earth shook with the sound. Adonia and his guests heard the celebrating and shouting just as they were finishing their banquet. When Joab heard the sounds of trumpets, he asked, What's going on? Why is the city in such an uproar? And while he was still speaking, Jonathan, son of Abathar the priest, arrived. Come in, Adonia said to him. For you are a good man. You must have good news. Not at all, Jonathan replied. 
Our Lord King David has just declared Solomon king. The king sent him down to Gion Spring with Zadok the priest, Nathan the prophet, and Benani, son of Jehoiada. Protected by the king's bodyguard, they had him ride on the king's own mule. And Zadok and Nathan have anointed him as the new king. They have just returned and the whole city is celebrating and rejoicing. That's what all the noise is about. Moreover, Solomon is now sitting on the royal throne as king. All the royal officials went to King David and congratulated him, saying, May your God make Solomon's fame even greater than your own, and may Solomon's kingdom be even greater than yours. Then the king bowed his head in worship as he lay in his bed, and he spoke these words, Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who today has chosen someone to sit on my throne while I am still alive to see it. Then all of Adonia's guests jumped up in panic from the banquet table and quickly went their separate ways. Adonia himself was afraid of Solomon, so he rushed to the sacred tent and caught hold of the horns of the altar. Word soon reached Solomon that Adonia had seized the horns of the altar and that he was pleading, Let Solomon swear today that he will not kill me. Solomon replied, If he proves himself to be loyal, he will not be harmed. But if he does not, he will die. So King Solomon summoned Adonia and they brought him down from the altar. He came and bowed low before the king, and Solomon dismissed him, saying, Go on home. With special guest, <laughs> Egypt. <laughs> As the time of King David's death approached, he gave this charge to his son, Solomon. I'm going where everyone on earth must someday go. Take courage and be a man. Observe the requirements of the Lord your God and follow all his ways. Keep each of the laws, commands, regulations, and stipulations written in the law of Moses so that you will be successful in all that you do and wherever you go. If you do this, when the, then the Lord will keep the promise he made to me. If your descendants live as they should and follow me faithfully with all their heart and soul, one of them will always sit on the throne of Israel. And there's something else. You know that jo Joab, son of Zeruiah, Zeruiah, murdered my two army commanders, Abner, son of Ner, and Amasa, son of Jether, Jether. He pretended that it was an act of war, but it was done at a time of peace staining his belt and sandals with blood of war. Do with him what you think best, but do not let him die in peace. <laughs> Dang. He's <laughs> cold. Be kind to the sons of Brazili, Brazili from Gilead. Make them permanent guests of the king, for they took care of me when I felled, fell, fled from your brother, Absalom, Absalom, mm -hmm. and remember Shemmi, Shemi, son of Gera, and Benjaminite, son of Bahurim. He cursed me, son from. Oh my goodness, I'm sorry. He cursed me with a terrible curse as I was fleeing Maham, Mahania, Mahana. When he came down to meet me at the Jordan River, I swore by the Lord that I would not kill him, but that oath does not make him innocent. You are a wise man, and you will know how to arrange bloody death for him. And arrange a bloody death for him. Then David died and was buried in the city of David. He re, re oh my gosh, he reigned over Israel for forty years, seven of seven of them in Hebron and 33 in Jerusalem. Solom, Solom succeeded him as king. Solomon. Solomon, sorry, succeeded him as king, replacing his father, David. 
and he was firmly established on the throne. One day, Adon Adonija, Adonia, Adonia, okay, whose mother was Haggith, came to see ba Bathsheba's Solomon's mother. Bathsheba, Solomon's mother. Have you come to make trouble? She asked him. No, he said. I come in peace. In fact, I have a favor to ask for you. What is it? She asked. He replied, As you know, the kingdom was mine. Everyone expected me to be the next king, but tables were turned, and everything went to my brother instead. For that is the way the Lord wanted it. So now I have just one favor to ask of you. Please don't turn me down. What is it? She asked. He replied, Speak to the king Solomon, Solomon on behalf, for I know he will do anything your request, of your request. Ask him to give me Abshi, Ab, Abishag, the girl from Shunem, as my wife. All right, Bathsheba replied, I will speak to the king for you. So Bathsheba went to the king Solomon to speak on Ab. Don, Abdonia. Abdonia's behalf, sorry. The king rose from his throne to meet her, and he bowed down before her. When he sat down on his throne, again he ordered that a throne be brought for his mother, and she sat at his right hand. I have a small request to make for you, she said. I hope you won't turn me down. What is it, mother? he asked. You know I won't refuse you. Then let your brother Abdonia marry Abishag, the girl from Shunem. He replied, You might as well be asking me to give the kingdom. <laughs> you know what? You know that he is my older brother. And that he's Abithar? Abithar? Mm -hmm. The priest and Job's son of Syria on his side. Then King Solomon swore solemnly by the Lord, may God strike me dead if Abdonias has not sealed his fate with this request. The Lord confirmed me and placed me on the throne of my father, David. My father, David. He was established my dynasty as he promised. So as surely as the Lord lives, Abdonia will die this very day. So King Solomon ordered Benaiah, son, huh? Benaiah. Benaiah, sorry. Son of Jo. Jo. Joeyada. <laughs> I'm sorry. Joeyada to ex execute, execute him. And Abdonia was put to death. The king said to Abathar, the priest, Go back to your home in Ad Anath Anathoth. You deserve to die, but I will not kill you now, because you carried the Ark of Savorian Lord for my sovereign. So sovereign Lord for my father, and you suffered right along with him through all his troubles. Solomon disposed. Abathar from his possession as priest of the Lord, thereby fulfilling the decree the Lord had made at Shiloh concerning his, the descendants of Eli. Although he had not followed Ab Absalom earlier, jo Joab had also joined Abdonia's revolt. And then the king said to Abathar the priest, Go back to your home in Anoth. You deserve to die, but I will not kill you now, because you carried the ark of the sovereign Lord, my father, and you suffered right along with him through his troubles. So Solomon disposed of Abathar from his position as priest of the Lord, thereby fulfilling the decree the Lord had made at Shiloh concerning the descendants of Eli. Although he had not followed Absalom earlier, Joab had also joined Abdon, Abdon, Abdonia's mm -hmm. revolt. When Job heard about Abdonia's death, he ran to the sacred tent of the Lord and caught hold of the horns of the altar. 
<clears throat> when news of his re- when the news of this reached King Solom, he sent Ben 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 and I Ben and I Ben. Wait, that's not how it's spelled though. Ben and I. Go ben on. and I. Oh, yes, it is. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> he sent Ben and I's son of um, Jiho. Oh. Jehoira, Jehoira. Jeho Iota. Yeah, Jeho Iota to execute him. Ben and I went into the sacred tent of the Lord and said to Joab, The king orders you to come out. But Joab answered, No, I will die here. But Ben, but ben and I returned to the king and told him what Job said. Joab. Joab said, do as he said, the king replied. Kill him there beside the altar and bury him. This will not remove the guilt of his senselessness murders from me and from my father's family. Then the Lord will repay him for the murders of the two men who were right, more righteous and better than he. For my father has no party to the deaths of Abner, the son of Ner, commander of the army of Israel, and Amasa son of Jether, commander of the army of Judah. May Joab and his descendants be forever guilty for these murders, and may the Lord grant peace to David and his descendants and to his throne forever. So Ben and I, son of Jodia, Joad, Jo, Joiada, Joiada, returned to the sacred tent and killed Job, Joab. Joab was buried at his home in the wilderness. Then the king appointed Benai, Benai, to command the army in place of Joab. And he installed Zadok, the priest, to take the place of Abathar. The king sent for Shemai, Shemai and told him, Build a house there in Jerusalem and live there. But don't sleep outside. The city outside the city to go anywhere else on the day you cross Kidron Valley you will surely die your blood will be in on your own head Shemai replied your sentence is fair but I will do whatever my lord the king command commands so Shemai lived in Jerusalem for a long time but three years later, two of Shemai, Shemai's slaves escaped to King Ash, Ash Ashish, Ash, Ashes. Yeah, I think that's fine. Just go with it. Of Gath, when Shemai returned where they were, he saddled his donkey and went to Gath to search for them. When he had found them, he took them back to Jerusalem. Solomon heard that Shemai had left Jerusalem and had gone to Gath and returned. So he sent for Shemai and demanded, Didn't I make you swear by the Lord and warn you not to go anywhere else? Or you will surely die? He replied, The sentence is fair. I will do as you say. Then why haven't you kept your oath to the Lord and obeyed my command? The king also said to Shemai, You'll surely remember all the wicked things you did to my father, King David. May the Lord punish you for them. But may I receive the Lord's rich blessings, and may one of the Dave, one of David's descendants always sit on his throne, on this throne. <laughs> then at the king's command, Ben and I, son of Jeodia, took Shemai outside and killed him. So the kingdom was now firmly in Solomon's grip. And it was written. He said, scatter the seed. He told us walk by faith and we won't lack a thing. Pray without ceasing.